Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our July 19th Des Moines City Council meeting. Um, prior to the start of our meeting, um, we're going to quickly go over uh, some of the rules. Um, so, again, as we say, uh, we welcome the germane comments from the general public uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, but this is a business meeting. It's a council business meeting, and we're here to do the business of the people, and the council needs to conduct the people's business. And the council has rules that are uh, validly adopted under Iowa law and whose rules will be followed. Anyone engaging in disruptive conduct in the council chambers or the Great Hall will result in those being disruptive being ordered to leave the building and being denied readmittance re uh, for the remainder of the day. Uh, no person will be admitted to stand in the council chamber during the council sessions between the audience seats and the council members except the persons addressing the council at the speaker's microphone and only after being recognized that, that uh, you were uh, going to be our, our, our speaker either pointed out or listed. Uh, all persons desiring to address the council may do so only when recognized, and, but the council reserves the right to limit the speaker's time in the order in which the speakers may address the council. Uh, under Section 2-70 of the City Code, it is illegal to interrupt any person who is addressing the council except by a council member, uh, and it is illegal to disrupt the council meeting. Everyone in attendance has First Amendment rights. We understand that, and any disruptive conduct by one person or a group that impinges on the rights of others uh, that are present uh, so disruptive conduct will not be tolerated. So if the meeting is disrupted, the public uh, speaking portion of the meeting may be moved to the next in-person meeting, which is not disrupted. Those who disrupt the meeting will not be called on during the meeting and will be ordered to leave the building and may be cited or arrested for disorderly conduct, trespass, or interfering with the good order of the meeting with other applicable charges. Uh, we thought it important that everybody understand that and that the rules uh, are out there and that everybody uh, hears them and they were posted as we moved along. Let's uh, now call the meeting uh, to order and I will ask uh, the clerk please to take roll. County? Here. Bozen? Here. Boss? Here. Gray? Here. Westergaard? Here. Mandelbaum? Here. Gatto? Here. Your Honor, we have a quorum. All right. Uh, could we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented and or as amended? Moved. And it's been moved. Thank you, Council Member. But I will quickly uh, uh, let everybody know that uh, on the agenda this evening, that uh, the on the consent, 54B has been amended, corrected roll call, um, police vehicles from 13 to 11. Uh, 54G uh, has been withdrawn uh, for further discussion. And 73I, um, 73I and 73S uh, have been withdrawn. Uh, and uh, those individuals are um, unable and unavailable to speak this evening. L. L. L also. Oh, there. L. I'm sorry. I and L. I and L both. All right. And I believe that's it on the agenda, and it has been moved. Unless anybody has any other questions. Mayor County, don't you have... Uh, um, Items that people wish to speak or abstain or voting no. It's we'll talk question. about those under the consent agenda. Okay. Sorry. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes. Now moving on to the uh, 
approving the consent agenda tonight. Those are items three through 58. Um, and as was pointed out, we do have a number of consent items. Item 4J, um, Council Member Gatto ab abstains. Item 5, um, I vote no. Item 14A, uh, Council Member Bozen abstains. Uh, 14B, Council Member Mandelbaum abstains. And 54B, Council Member Mandelbaum is going to speak on that one. I'll move the rest, Your Honor. All right. Okay. Um, also, um, of those, and uh, the uh, the one to speak again is the 54B. Um, I will also say that um, there has been, and we received from the general public, uh, and I will say this to the council, a request to remove some additional items. Uh, these were public requests, and uh, um, item number 48 was requested, item 49 was requested, item 50 was requested, item 51 was requested, item 54B was uh, requested, and um, item uh, 54D also was requested. So having said that, um, any questions? Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I would say, I mean, I, I've said before, and I, I would be willing to listen to public comments uh, up to a half hour as a group on these items. Uh, I do think that these are all pretty basic items and I would, I plan on supporting those items, uh, but I would be willing to listen to public comment uh, on these items and just wanted to go on the record on that. Okay. Any other comment? I moved item three. All right, and um, let's go through the uh, um, the motion to pull. To pull them all? Is that a motion to pull? Is that a motion to pull? Uh, what? Yes, I guess that'd be a motion to pull and to uh, to allow them to be addressed public comment as a group for up to thirty minutes. Okay, um, and I will say that uh, on the items, and I think we all received some of it, um, that those items were, um, the requests all pretty much look the same. Right. And so um, I think that if we were to um, do it, they ought to, maybe we have one person, since they all pretty much said the same thing, speak to each one of these, and we'll allow the comment up to that. Time if, well, we have if to it's vote so on passed. it, don't we, first, right. sir? Right. You have to vote on the motion. Whatever. Right. So we'll vote on the uh, the motion it, to we, remove. I don't even know what items we're even looking at. I mean, I it, we, it, we it, had it, we had such a group of them that I, yeah, I guess 48, I 49, 50, it, 51, so, 54 B and hang on 54 one second D. Here. So and I can walk through. I mean, one of the items was applying for grant funding for something already allocated. That was the PERF training, and we all supported that funding. Right. And I think it's a positive that we're applying for grant funding to fund that. Another was just an extension of a grant that's already funded. Uh, a third item was uh, for our uh, contract to implement our data collection, which was part of our racial profiling ordinance. And again, I think that's a positive, and I'm glad we're making progress on that. Uh, a fifth item is the uh, police vehicles, and I was planning on talking about that separately. And then a sixth is simply renewing software licensing uh, so that we can continue to operate our, our dispatch. So they're, they're pretty basic. It, it, they're appropriate for the consent, I, consent agenda, but 
I'm just willing to listen uh, to some public comment on them if folks feel they feel the need. Okay. Okay. You kind of you, you, you kind of went through the whole gamut of all of them, and I, I guess I don't see the need that we need to have a discussion since everything's already allocated for most of these, and they are appropriate for the consent. It, so I'm not going to support anything like that just to sit here and uh, and be able to take some type of criticism or comments of any of any kind. I think we've had plenty of that. Um. Here we go. Okay, so we've, uh, I think we'll um, vote on the amendment uh, first. On the, on the motion. On the motion to, to see about giving on one half hour to, uh, for all these items. That was an amendment to his first motion to move the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, again, on uh, 48, 49, 50, 51, and uh, 54B and uh, 54D, uh, motion to amend your amendment. Uh, let's uh, vote on that and uh, ask the clerk to turn on the vote. Okay. County. I thought we were going to push the button. Right. Are we going to push the buttons, Kay? Or oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm used to Zoom. Just a moment. Okay. That's four no, two yes, motion carry, or doesn't carry. That's three yes. All right, now we move on to the uh, motion to the... Uh, I'll make the motion to move item three. Okay, item three has been moved. And let's all vote on that one as well. Seven yes, motion carries. <coughs> All right, that takes us to item um, 54B. How and are you doing the people first? You won't let them talk. Mm -hmm. How are you doing that? There you go, Frank. You, you want to make a motion to recess, Frank? Okay, uh, I would ask you to uh, stand down. We already have said that standing up uh, is uh, not allowed. I'm going to ask you to get down off the chair and stand down now. You're being. Uh, uh, disruptive and would ask you to stand down. You saw that we had a vote on it, sir, and it's been voted. It was a four to three vote. All right, thank you. Uh, I, we would ask you to uh, not disrupt the, the proceedings. And so I would ask both the woman standing on her chair and uh, those who haven't been uh, recognized. Are you going to get down? I'll make a motion to recess, and so they can be asked to get no, down. No, I would. Uh, I would ask um, to get some assistance to. Um, Absolutely not. You're not following the rules. I'll make a motion to recess, Frank, for five minutes. Get off the chair, and she doesn't and you'll ask her to. Yeah. All right. I'm again going to ask you to get off the chair. We've been very clear that is being disruptive. You know that. And I'm going to ask you to stand down so that you can um, be here and participate in the meeting if you so choose. Otherwise, you're going to be disruptive. And I'm going to ask uh, those who are disrupting their speech. We're trying to conduct the people's business here. So are you going to? I ask you to stand down, please. I need to ask an officer to go get off the chair or yeah, All right, we're going to ask you to get off the chair or you're going to need to leave the building. It's been the same rule. Could uh, we have an officer go ask her to please stand down from the chair? How about we just make a motion to recess so we can go in the back and they can take care of business here? I'm going to make a motion to recess for five minutes so they can. Yep. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? All in favor, say aye. Aye. I don't want to watch that. Uh, <laughs>
No. Josh, I applaud you for saying what you said today, and then you shrivel up and fall behind every one of them. That's super disappointing for my council member, Representative. I was so fucking proud to see you say what you said. Okay, we need to start our meeting. Are we going to uh, please ask everybody to uh, follow proper protocol here? Uh, we're going to come out of recess, uh, and we're going to go straight to item 54B, uh, which is purchases uh, from the following. In this case, it's Divers Ford, uh, Scott Polite, general manager for 11 vehicles, including eight uh, Ford Utility Interceptor SUVs, one Ford Utility Interceptor, and one half-ton pickup truck SSA, $349,525.50. Uh, Dewey Ford, uh, Dan Butcher uh, is the manager for five vehicles, including two compact SUVs and three one-ton pickup truck cab and uh, chassis, uh, $171,263.14. And from Carl Chevrolet, Carl Moyer is the owner. For one full-size SUV, $26,957. And Stu Hansen, Dodge City, Dan Butcher is a general manager there. And for one large SUV, PPV, uh, $64,206.96 uh, per various State of Iowa Department of Administrative Services DAS uh, purchasing contracts for the use of public works, police, fire, and the total is $611,952.10. Council communication number 21-307. And I'll turn it over to Council Member Mandelbaum. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, the reason I wanted to pull this item and I uh, communicated with the manager and there have been some changes made to this item uh, as a consequence, uh, but the blue letter indicated that there were no uh, hybrid or all electric vehicles that were pursuit certified um, which it, which is important because uh, if there are no no vehicles that are certified there's nothing in that class range that we could evaluate uh, but there is it, at least one uh, hybrid electric that is pursuit certified uh, and so in working with the manager uh, it's a Ford utility, which was like the vehicles that we were purchasing, but it's a Ford utility interceptor that is a hybrid electric. Uh, it's relatively new to the market. We have not had an opportunity to test one. The manager agreed that it was appropriate to test these out uh, and to look, look at this option for future vehicles. And so I wanted to make sure that that, that was clear. That's why this item was amended to take two vehicles off and then I think we will be at our next meeting adding uh, two hybrids so that we have the full vehicle suite uh, and that will be a pilot or test of the way that the electric vehicles work. Uh, there's potential for at least some savings. Uh, a lot of the savings in pursuit vehicles happens when uh, with an electric pursuit vehicle, you don't have to idle while you are stopped somewhere to keep the sirens and equipment on. That's obviously something that you want to test out before that's in widespread adoption, but I am appreciative in working with Vehicle Fleet to, uh, to be testing this out on two vehicles, and hopefully it will work well, and we'll be able to look at this for more vehicles down the line. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to move item 54B. Seven yes, motion carries. All right, that completes uh, our consent agenda. We're gonna move uh, here to uh, the hearings. And I wanna uh, remind all of our audience, you know, um, where, where public comment uh, may not have been uh, uh, taken, uh, we invite anybody to convey any information generally or specifically uh, to the council or to the city manager. Uh, Des Moines residents are encouraged to submit any letters or emails or texts 
uh, with additional comments or information to ensure that they are sharing information they would like either of concern or to, uh, to bring those items up. Uh, for the hearing items tonight, I'm going to ask you please to um, uh, we ask you, I told you uh, specifically how to submit, and I would ask okay, that. Yeah. So we're not, we're not, we're not going to debate. I'm going to ask you to quit, quit disrupting. I'm asking you that now. Do not disrupt. Okay. Yeah, um, we're going to ask you to stop that behavior, and um, if you keep disrupting, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Okay, we, we've told you how to do that, and I'm not going to debate this with you. I'm going to ask you to stop disrupting, and I'm going to ask you one more time, and that's it. And then I'm going to ask you to be removed. So for the hearing items this evening, uh, we have two zoning items and one for annexation. Uh, those are items 61 to 63. Uh, we also have one vacation hearing, one vehicle lease purchase hearing, and several public improvement hearings. As a reminder, for the zoning and annexation items only, which are items 61 to 63, we will hear from the parties in interest first and then from the general public. The parties in interest for the zoning items include only the applicant for the rezoning and those persons living within 250 feet of the property to be rezoned whom the city has sent notices. The parties in interest for annexation item include only the applicant for the annexation or owners of those properties uh, to be annexed and the owners of property adjoining the property to be annexed and such representatives of the county, Iowa DOT, uh, and affected public utilities whom the city has sent notices. After all the parties in interest have commented, we will then open it up to any member of the public for germane comments. Uh, to aid in recognizing the parties in interest to the zoning item to speak, I will ask everyone else to not step to the microphone unless they are the zoning applicant or live within that 250 feet and received a mailed notice of the rezoning. To aid in recognizing the parties in interest to the annexation item to speak, I will ask everyone else to not step to the microphone unless they are the annexation applicant or that designated uh, party in interest and will receive and did receive that emailed or mailed notice of annexation. Uh, anyone who approaches the mic before it is their time it will be compared to the list and if you're not on that list, you'll be considered disruptive and will not be recognized for the remainder of the meeting and will be required to leave the building. Uh, so please wait until I call on the general public for the zoning or annexation items or you will not be called on again, as I say, for the remainder of this meeting and will be required to leave the building. After all the parties in interest have been called, the general public comment are not to exceed one minute per person. Uh, to a maximum of seven minutes and will be called upon for the germane public comment unless the hearing is ended sooner for the failure to make germane public comments. For the remainder of the hearings uh, this evening, any interested party may make germane comments at not to exceed one minute per person for a maximum of five minutes per hearing unless the hearing is ended sooner again for a failure to make germane public comments. As a reminder on the public improvement hearings, only comments as to the plans, specifications, form of documents, and engineer's estimate and low bidder designation will be considered germane and all other comments will be considered non-germane and disruptive. So um, with that, let's uh, start with item 59. Item 59 is on the proposition to authorize a lease purchase in the principal amount of not to exceed $75,000 
for the purpose of acquiring certain items of equipment consisting of three Nissan LEAF electric vehicles. Uh, again, germane comments from the public, and we'll ask uh, if anyone would like to speak on this. One minute for per, per person with five minutes. Would anybody like to speak on this uh, lease for these vehicles? You're done, Your Honor. I'll move item 59. Item 59 has been moved. Seven yes, motion carries. Takes us to item 60. Item 60 is on the vacation of segments of 42nd Street right of way and conveyance of easements for bus shelter encroachment on city owned property to the Des Moines Area Regional Transit Authority, DART, uh, for $440. Uh, germane comments again from the general public. One minute per person to speak and um, we will ask now uh, up to a maximum of five minutes. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this uh, vacation of this segment of 42nd Street for bus shelter? Please step up. Christopher Morse, 3517 52nd Street. I'd like to applaud the City Council for doing what they can to help with public transportation. However, if at all possible, I know at least one or two of you are on the Des Moines, um, on the board for DART. I would ask that we stop with the aggressive attacks on homelessness, making benches that people can't sit on, and other things along those sort. Thank you for your time. All right, any other comments? All right. I'm happy to move this item uh, this is part of the dart art shelter program as well so we'll be getting another art shelter at this location uh, we've seen the first one of those up at uh, university at I think it's 26 um, right right by the Drake campus uh, and these are a, a great partnership and look forward to seeing more art shelters I think there's several coming on six the Sixth Avenue corridor bill um, and, and they'll, we know that stops with shelters uh, have higher ridership and they're more accessible to folks. So glad to see these coming. Also glad to see the partnership with Bravo uh, to beautify the corridors at the same time. Seven yes, motion carries. Take us now to item 61 on the application for voluntary annexation by ILEX Group, Inc. of 0.94 acres in the vicinity of Northeast 14th Street and Broadway, Northeast Broadway. Uh, again, we'll ask first if there's any parties in interest. Uh, you'll be given up to uh, five minutes to speak. Again, parties in interest. Anyone, uh, either the applicant or Anybody that has received a uh, a letter regarding this that lives within that 250 feet. Seeing none, let's uh, open it up for uh, general public comments. Again, uh, one minute per person and uh, again, seven minute maximum on this. Anyone to speak regarding the application for the voluntary annexation? All right. Seven yes, motion carries. That'll take us to item 62. Item 62 is on a request from Larson Enterprises. John Fitzgerald is the officer for the property located at 1600 East Army Post Road to amend plan. DSM creating our tomorrow plan to revise the future land use classification from business park to community mixed use and to rezone the property from EX mixed use district to CX mixed use district to allow an expansion of the existing large format retail use. A is the first consideration the ordinance above and B is the final consideration the ordinance above the waivers requested 
by Neighborhood Services Department Director and requires six votes. Again, uh, let's ask for the parties in interest um, if there's anyone here to speak, party in interest, either the applicant or anyone living within that uh, 250 feet that has received a notice. Anyone? Seeing none, let's move on to uh, germane comments from the general public. Again, one minute per person, uh, up to seven maximum. Anybody to speak uh, regarding this request on a rezone? All right, seeing none. Your Honor, I'll move 62A and B. All right. Seven yes, motion carries. Takes us to item 63. Item 63 is continuing hearing on a request from Oscar and Enrique Sentento uh, to amend the plan DSM creating our tomorrow future land use classification for 2354 East Grand Avenue from neighborhood mixed use to community mixed use district and from MX1 industrial use district to MX3 mixed use district to allow an ongoing operation of a minor vehicle uh, maintenance repair use on the property. The plan and zone commission recommends denial this item was continued from our June 14th, uh, 2021 meeting, and the uh, request here is to continue this to August 9th of uh, 2021, our next meeting. We have a motion. Uh, I will uh, I will move item 63, Your Honor. The architect is that is, that is being continued. I know that it's been on several. Uh, several council meetings and uh, we've met with the neighborhood group and I think we're we're at a good place with them and um, with the owner of the property as long as he's going to make the improvements so we're hoping that on August 9th that we can uh, we can at least vote on this item okay, nope. so I vote? will move item 63 uh, to continue it until August 9th and all you need to do and I will vote seven yes motion carries all right, this takes us to item 64, which is on the Grandview Golf Course Cart Path Repairs Resolution Proving the Plan Specifications Form of Contract Documents Engineer's Estimate Receive and File Bids in Designating the Lowest Bidder as Inroads LLC, Joseph J. Manette, CEO, $217,026. Council Communication Number 21-333. A is it. Approval of the contract in the bond. Um, we will ask it, at this time on item 64 if the general public if, uh, to file any objections to the proposed plans, the specifications, the contract, or the estimated cost of the public improvement. And those will be the only comments to be considered germane on this. Uh, and again, we'll um, one minute per person to speak with a five minute maximum. Anyone to speak on the Grandview Golf Course? All right, Linda? Four and 64. Be a nice improvement. It'll be a very nice improvement. Needed. And as long as I'm saying, you know, they take really good care of Grandview. And whenever neighbors around there have had any issues with weeds, They've been very responsive. They're great partners to have. Good. And I and I think that we should also mention that this 217 is from money Deeds. that they've contributed mm -hmm. to us for operating the golf course. This isn't coming out of the general fund. No. Yes. Seven yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 65 which is on Gray's Parkway from Southwest 11th Street to Southwest 12th Street, a resolution approving the plan, specifications, form of contract documents, and engineer's estimate, receive and file the bids, and designating of the lowest responsible bidder as Absolute Concrete Construction, Inc., 
Sonny E. Hall is the president, $869,869. Council communication number 21-337. A is the approval of the contract and the bond and permission to sublet. Again, general uh, public may file objections to the pro proposed plan, specifications, the contract, or the estimated cost of the public improvement. And those are going to be the only comments that are allowed uh, to and considered germane in this instance. Uh, again, one minute per person to speak. We'll ask at this time if the general public would like to make objection. Okay, seeing none. Mr. Mayor, I'll move item 55 and 65A. All right. Seven yes, motion carries. Takes item 66 is on the 2021 HMA residential paving program contract. Three lost resolution approving plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file bids, and designated the lowest responsible bidder as Grimes Asphalt and Paving Corporation. Timothy Malicote is the president, $885,110.25. Council communication number 21-329. A is the approval of the contract and bond and permission to sublet. Again, general public uh, can file objections to the plans or the specifications, contract, or the estimated cost of the improvement. And those, again, are the only comments that are going to be considered germane this evening. Uh, again. Will allow one minute uh, per person to speak with a five minute maximum. Anyone want to speak regarding the HMA paving program? If, if not, I'll move 66 and 66A. All right. Mayor, I would just say uh, just a, a comment. You know, we, we've said how our local option sales tax was going to be used in infrastructure and road improvements. And uh, this is just an example of, of how we're keeping our word and we're doing what we said we were going to do. So um, good job to staff for, for getting this on here and getting some of these residential streets back to where we need them to be. Joe. I feel like Coleman. Seven yes. Motion carries. Moves us to item 67. Item 67 is on the 2021 sewer repair contract. One, resolution proving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file of bids, and designating of the lowest responsible bidder as on track construction LLC. Matthew Rungi is the president, $1,687,000. Council communication number 21 330A is approval of the contract and bond and permission to sublet. Again, this is um, on the sewer repair contract one. Um, general public may uh, file objections to the proposed plan specifications, contract, or estimated cost of the public improvement. And those, again, are going to be the only comments to be considered germane. Uh, one minute per person to speak, up to five minutes maximum. Is there. Um, Anyone would like to speak on this sewer repair contract one? If not, I'll move 67 and 67A. All right. It's been moved. Seven yes. Motion carries. Text item 68 is on 34th and Urbandale sidewalk and intersection improvements. The resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file of bids, and designating of the lowest responsible bidder as TK Concrete Inc. Tony J. Vermeer is the president, $824,994. Council communication number 21-331. A is approving of the contract and the bond and permission to sublet. 
Uh, again, the general public can file objections to the plan, specifications, contract, or the estimated cost of the public improvement, and those will be the only comments to be considered germane. Uh, again, we'll allow one minute per person to speak, up to a maximum of five minutes. Seeing none. Mayor, um, this is a good improvement for that uh, turn there. It turns off uh, Urbandale on Lido, and the people that own the house on the uh, north side of Lido have had two or three crashes in their front yard. So uh, I was working with uh, engineering. I'm glad to see that we've got a good plan put in place. Uh, we're also going to tackle the sidewalk over there on the east side of 34th Street and just make Carl feel better. We're going to get some uh, bike crossing lanes in there as well. So I'm going to move 68 and 68A. Seven yes. Motion carries. Item 69 is on the McRae Park slope stabilization retaining walls at EMC Overlook. Resolution approving the plan, specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file bids, and designating of the lowest responsible bidder is Progressive Structures LLC. Travis Augustin is the manager, $1,488,035. Council communication number 21-336. Is approval of the contract and the bond and permission to sublet. The uh, general public again can file uh, objections or make comment on the proposed plans, the specifications, the contract, or the estimated cost of the public improvement. And those again are the only comments that we'll consider germane. Uh, we'll allow one minute per speaker, up to five minutes. Anyone want to speak on the McRae Park slope stabilization? Mayor, can I just ask a, a question about this uh, from staff? Of how how long do we expect, um, or if any, if any, is Thomas Beck going to be closed uh, during the construction of these walls? Is is it going to be closed off completely? Is it going to go down to you know two lanes? But it has that median in the middle. So I'm just wondering, um, is the is the road going to be completely closed? My understanding is playing cars are complete. Steve, and he is just right behind. Okay. I just didn't I didn't see that. And I know that folks are gonna be asking, so we should probably get that answer. So at least Josh and I are prepared to give an answer to him and other council members. Yeah. Just a second, I know they're delayed about three seconds. That's fine. Yeah. Honorable right. Romero, members of the City Council, Steve Neighbor, City Engineer. Uh, we did actually put a contract provision that they have to have Thomas Beck. Thomas Beck will need to be closed during the immediate the main construction of the retaining walls, uh, but we put a provision that it has to be opened back up by, by uh, November 1st. So it's during the heart of the construction, but not the entire duration of the project that it'll have to be opened. So how long so will that be? From November 1st. Um, you're pro you probably are looking at uh, potentially a couple months of construction where it could be closed. So like... So September, from, October? Or? Yes, correct. September, okay. October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A complete closure east west, both side, both both ways, um, correct? Is that what we're looking at? Correct. Yep. Yep. So okay. <coughs> Yep, just west of west of Bancroft Street there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just west of Bancroft. But Bancroft will be open, so you'll be able to take a uh, right turn and go east on, on Thomas Beck, but not be able to go west on Thomas Beck. Is that that's correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate yep. it. I'm happy to move item 69 and 69A. Seven yes. Motion carries. Yeah, no. 
Item 70 is on the demolition of the DICO buildings at 200 Southwest 16th Street, the resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file the bids and designating the lowest responsible bidder as Earth Services and Abatement LLC, DBA, Iowa Demolition. Christian Mitchell is the co-president, $731,894, Council Communication Number 21-309. A is approval of the contract and the bond and permission to sublet. B is approving the exception to the request for proposal process for good cause and improving professional services agreement, PSA, with impact. 7G for the demolition of the DICO building's asbestos abatement hazard materials removal and demolition oversight uh, not to exceed $100,000. Council communication number 21-335. Uh, general public again may um, file any objections to the plan specifications, the contract or the estimated cost of the public improvement and those are the only comments that are going to be um, uh, considered germane. Again, uh, one minute per person to speak. Reverend Emily Ewing, my pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm concerned particularly about item 70B and the impact it will have on the environment. We've already had enough with climate change and with rolling back of environmental protections. And so to offload the environmental concerns onto another organization and without the proper planning built into this, I'm concerned about what will happen. Also, I had read that this demolition was supposed to begin today, which is presumably before you have approved it, which raises concerns for me. So perhaps that was written wrong um, in the documents, but I'd like those to be addressed, please. Uh, Mayor, if I could, I will again ask Steve to come forward, but I can answer a couple of those questions. Uh, first and foremost, the, uh, the EPA has already started on their process, they're, they are responsible for some of the removal and demolition. So I believe there, that may be the confusion on uh, the building removes, removals that are occurring now, and that all of these contractors are certified to be able to remove um, hazardous waste, as stated here. So uh, that those processes are very closely uh, uh, managed and oversight. And so, uh, and, and to add to that. Uh, um, I think that's a good explanation. We've worked closely with the EPA, and they're taking out, uh, what is it, uh, Steve, two buildings or three? Three. And uh, those are the ones that are were really of great concern because not only was there asbestos, there was chemicals and all kinds of other stuff. So EPA, okay. Okay, so <laughs> so at any rate, um, EPA is working um, specifically on the three buildings, and we'll have Steve quickly go over that, but they're working on the ones that, that they see as the most highly polluted for a variety of reasons. We're working on the, the general office ones, and the only thing is asbestos, and we hired somebody that we feel totally capable of doing that in his past uh, uh, muster. But Steve, go ahead. Uh, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, Steve Neighbor, City Engineer. Uh, the mayor and city manager are correct. Uh, the city has actually been working in, uh, together with the Environmental Protection Agency for some time to develop a plan to clean up this site. And, and as the mayor indicated, the EPA is, is, is demoing the buildings one, two, and three. Uh, this action that we see before us tonight is the city's partnership to demo the office building and production building, uh, two, two different buildings. Uh, and then also uh, the city as a precautionary is hiring a uh, professional firm to inspect and oversee and ensure that the asbestos abatement is done uh, in accordance with the EPA's requirements and the and the specific specifications. Uh, it's a firm that's obviously licensed and experienced in doing that inspection to make sure the contractor does it uh, appropriately. Yep. Yep. Well, and I will say that that's a a, a good uh, concern that I think that our public has, and we've had it for I don't know 40 years. Yeah and uh, um, couldn't get anybody to move on it, and EPA finally stepped up and, and uh, helped us resolve it, and uh, it was really a, a tug of war to finally get it done, but uh, I, I think great work on the part of our staff and, 
and at the end of the day, EPA as well. So, any other? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Taylor Weber, uh, he, him pronouns. Uh, I appreciate the effort being put forward on the environmental uh, issues that arise in this in this area. And I'm not personally familiar with impact, but I think you know partnering where, where it makes sense in these kind of things is a, is a great thing for the city and effective for city resources. I guess my biggest concern is as it, as it relates to the, the DICO site and in particular um, decision making that currently exists with security on that lot and the decisions that have been made on who to contract with and who to hire in those areas to work with. Uh, being the Conley group and the issues that we know have come forward with that, I, I, I guess I question um, Council's decision to, to partner with this organization as well. Worry that same sort of uh, issues might arise potentially with someone who doesn't represent the best interests of the city, knowing uh, Conley's history with his public racist and, and demeaning comments about committee member, or, uh, community members and, and members of the public that they've tried to have their, their voices heard. Uh, just worried uh, that maybe the city is, isn't having the best interest of the community in mind when partnering with organizations on the DICO site. Any other comment? Mayor County? Um, yes. Uh, our speakers are supposed to give their home address also, aren't they? Well, well, we'll work on that. Steve? Uh, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, just to, for clarification, uh, what you have before you is is the the bid award of con construction contract uh, to Earth Services and Abatement that was done by a public bidding process that we're required to do by state law, Chapter 26 state law. So that was a competitive public bid. Item B is the professional is a, is a separate item, but it's it's part of the whole package that we're hiring a professional services firm to do asbestos abatement inspection. So it's to inspect to make sure that the, the as, as the contractor is de demoing the building, that they're properly removing uh, the contaminated material, the asbestos materials. Uh, that firm has done, uh, 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 along, is in a pool of firms that they've done by selection process. They're licensed to do this work, uh, to, to do asbestos abatement. It's a specific trade, uh, so that's why they're chosen on this. So again, it's to do asbestos inspection uh, for, for the project. Thank you. All right, can we have a motion? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to move item 70. 70A and 70B. Uh, real excited to see this going forward, and uh, it's great that EPA has started their part of the remediation of this site and their part of the cleanup. Uh, I believe almost three and a half million dollars from the settlement is going towards the cleanup on EPA's part. They're doing their part first, and then the city is contributing and, and doing additional demolition and cleanup. Uh, I appreciate actually having the third party inspector to make sure that we are properly complying with the environmental regulations so that the public can have confidence that we're getting this site cleaned up appropriately and getting it back into reuse. You know, Mayor, to your point, it's been a super fun site since I was four years old. Uh, and we're going to have this cleaned up. The public is going to start seeing noticeable improvement on this site. Uh, particularly with the first buildings coming down. By the end of the year, the site should be cleared. I believe that's right, Steve. By the end of the year, the site will be cleared and this eyesore will be no more and we'll have a great opportunity to transform this area and make it a destination in our community. So this is great progress and another example of the good work that we can, we can do when we work with our partners. Nice work. I didn't think for my tenure on this council I'd ever see that building uh, cleaned up. So I know it's been in the process for a long time. Great Mayor, you've been dealing with it for a long time, haven't you? Too long. That was seven yes. Motion carries. Item number 71 is Ashworth Pool and Northwest Pool painting improvements. The um, item here is to reject all bids and close the hearing on the plans, the specifications, form of contract documents, and the engineer's estimate. Council communication on this is 21-332.
We have a motion. Mayor, I'll, uh, I'll move it if that's all right, Josh. I got Northwest in here too. But uh, see if we got a question. Does this mean that uh, we're uh, not going to be able to get anything done this year? It's going to have to be next year to get it painted? Honorable Mayor, Member of City Council, uh, Steve Neighbor, City Engineer. Uh, so uh, in terms of the question, uh, we, we actually are working with our, our uh, Parks and Rec and Facility staff to do some uh, interim crack, crack sealing and crack painting to keep it going, and then we're going to bid this uh, what we think is it a, is a, a better time to, to get more hopefully competitive bids. So, yep. I think so, too. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Steve. That's seven yes. Motion carries. It's just to reject all the bids. Hopefully it'll come back and, and we'll get some more input. All right. Um, let's move to the, uh, the communications and the reports. Item 73 is a uh, request to speak. And uh, again, uh, for the persons speaking this evening under the public speaking item for the agenda, we will only be uh, calling on those who have registered to speak. Each of the 20 speakers this evening will receive up to two minutes uh, to make their comments. And please keep your own time because at the end of those two minutes, the clerk will announce time and the speaker's mic uh, will be closed and we will move immediately to the next speaker. We want to hear from all of our residents and we encourage the residents to be respectful to others' viewpoints that may be different from your own. Uh, while you may certainly disagree with an input or a viewpoint, uh, I want to remind everyone that the council's rules provide that any comments that are slanderous uh, will result to that speaker being barred from further comment. As a presiding officer, I will uh, determine whether those comments are slanderous or not. Fair warning, arguing with the presiding officer about these determinations or on any manner is not permitted and doing so will be considered disruptive and the result of the speaker being barred again from further comment uh, and being asked to leave the building. So let's um, start and do we have, uh, is Diane here? Diane, step right up. Honorable Mayor and Council, uh, my name is Diane Hussey. I'm from California. I'm an architect there, but I also own a loft here in downtown Des Moines in the Mulberry Lofts building, Unit 602. The day that the Florida building collapsed, my structural engineer, uh, Jim Tomatich, called me and said I needed to get in touch with the city. He's concerned about the structural stability of Mulberry Lofts. For five years, I've been working with the association and calling properties to try to get repairs made unsuccessfully. Uh, I met with the city on Friday, city staff, Aaron Olson Douglas and Brian Bishop and their team. And they took a tour of my loft and the building. I have been prevented since September of 2019 by the city from being able to rent my loft. It has given me extreme financial distress. And I also have been assessed penalties for not repairing my loft. The parts of my loft that I have been assessed for in this notice from the inspection department are not under my ownership. They are common building elements common to the building, their structural beams, their wrought iron rib cages, their lintels over the windows, and they're not my responsibility because I do not own them. The association and Colin Properties, the management company, are the ones that actually have control of hiring people to fix those items. I don't. So I'm here tonight to request, if my loft is not a public nuisance, I would like council to vote to allow me to rent it again. Um, and I would also like council to vote to uh, not require me to pay all these um, penalties for something I don't okay. own. Um, Scott, is there a staff person that, that I, it sounds like you've met with staff, so we'll follow up. 
Yes, I met it. Erin Olson Douglas informed me okay. on Friday that she was going to consult with the attorney okay. for the city and then right. get back to us. Thank you. Can we make sure that legal or whoever sends a, an appropriate letter in response? Yes, we can make sure that that communication happens and the limitations that we have is, is the local government, knowing that this is a private property situation. Thanks, Diane. Next speaker is Cora Egerman. Is Cora here? Again, Cora Egerman. All right. James McAvoy. My name is James McAvoy. I go by Mike. I've lived at 3027 East 13th Street since. Uh, early uh, 1983 um, there's a house used to be a house next door to me that was demolished probably five years ago the lot is still vacant uh, taxes haven't been paid on it since uh, 20 13, I believe. Um, there is now a tree, an ash tree, that's got emerald ash borer, and the tree has many large limbs that are hanging over my neighbor's house. And he is very afraid of it. He tried to get estimates before the ratio, and after the ratio, the price went from thirteen hundred to two thousand dollars. He did not have the money, to, and this was just the branches from his property over his house. But the whole tree needs to come down, and there is nobody taking responsibility for this property. Um, the bank used to be owned by. Uh, National City Mortgage Company sold it to another bank, and I believe that bank sold it to a uh, bank in Dubai, India. And there's nobody to contact about this. I would like to help with the city to remove this tree. Uh, that's it. I do have pictures if anybody wants. All right. Them. Scott, you might uh, want to just. Yeah. Do you want to leave those those pictures, Mike? Yeah, it's up on the screen. Yeah. All right. Over his house. Yeah, it's over his house, and and the neighbors have been mowing it. You've been taking care of it. Sam, who lives in that house, he mows. Also, take care of the sidewalk. Yeah, I've been taking care of the yard probably since uh, before the owner left. Right. I in uh, okay. December twenty first. Thanks for being a good neighbor. <laughs> So, that you're taking care of it. So I'm just going to move to receive and file, and I'm going to direct city manager to take a look at this. This is a very unique situation. And for safety reasons, I'm concerned about this tree. It's uh, intimate danger. Yeah, it, it really is. So there's another large tree, but that's not an emerald tree or an ash tree. It's a maple. But, yeah, but this one really is. So I, I've asked Scott to to take a look at it. I've referred it back to him, and he's going to work with forestry and see what we can get done. Thank you. Thank so, you. So is the tree owned by, by It's on the lot. By the person in the White House? Uh, we have a motion here to, uh, to receive and file that information. So all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That's all we need. I think he answered. I just wondered if that tree was... The people in the White House. But no, no, it's not. That belongs to the vacant lot 
and the city took down the house as a nuisance five years ago. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Chris Morris. Chris Morris, 3517 52nd Street, Des Moines, Iowa. They, them pronouns, please. There's been uh, some concern as to whether or not you would understand if I was addressing you as a president of the Merle Hay Neighborhood Association as opposed to an individual. I hope this physical change of hats helps you understand that. I don't know if that's a comment on your ability to pick up on what's happening around you or on my board's trust of me, but I thank you for your indulgence. I had showed up this evening to talk about a number of issues that I feel have been unresolved over the last year, year and a half. As you know, just right outside my front door, we had events happen at the corner of Merle Hay and Douglas, and countless events that have happened since then of police brutality, violence, lack of accountability, and favoritism that, whether real or perceived, that is happening when people try to address this chamber and address individuals. I, for my part, have not had that problem, and I thank you for the ability to work with you both as a citizen and as a community leader. I'd love to talk with you more about those, but I think something that's very pressing that needs to be talked about right today is the fact that there was no female security guard that would be available to help somebody who is uncomfortable being searched or addressed by a male officer or a security guard when they were checking in. I also have concerns with the inability for people to bring in their own bottle of water and other changes that have happened with security. For an ability situation, for accessibility, I have concerns in regards to the lack of captions being available and or a sign language interpreter. I know this is new in the scheme, short scheme of things coming back into meetings, but there's opportunities for improvement here and some of them need to be addressed immediately. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to following up with you again about things that are more long-term. Diane Thacker. Diane? Good evening, Mayor, County, and Council members and women. We, a nod for Situational Awareness, LLC, I, Diane Thacker, Janice Biddle, and my son, Michael um, Thacker. I'm going to back up a little bit. Janice Biddle uh, is our author and illustrator of our book, Be Kind. And my son, Michael Thacker, is our logo designer for the business. And our 20 members, um, they're very honored to be able to present our, uh, <coughs> propose our business to you. They're not here, but if they're, hopefully they're watching. Um, this um, business was put on our heart by, uh, for those living with special needs, children or siblings, and the struggles and the joys that come with them, especially in the presence of officers, EMS, and medical personnel. Today, there's so much good conversation about how our loved ones and our public officials are being treated, despite all the support that we're bringing them, like the police. We, a nod for situational awareness today, bring our voices, not only for our loved ones, but also for our helpers, the EMS and the medical staff who are under daily scrutiny about how they help us mindfully and situationally during already stress-filled situations. Today, we're asking that a nod for situational awareness, LLC, be recognized and supported, not only for our loved ones, for our servants, the officials, and people trying to reach out for help, especially when our voices appear unheard during public places or homes. Let us reclarify: we are in support of the training that our public servants receive, and we are trying to get the awareness of our business, product, and service not only that only supports our public services, but families who deal with special needs, Alzheimer's, and anxiety conditions, who need support, understanding, and safety for all involved. For more understanding, please contact A Not for Situational Awareness, LLC, at LetYourLightShine.com, or my telephone number, which is there in your uh, right. Diane, would you give us your address? Yes, please. Uh, to, please. 2526 East 29th Street, Des Moines, Iowa, 50317. Thank you. Thank you. Connie Wright.
Hi, good evening, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak at Des Moines City Council. My name is Connie Wright. I actually live in Altoona, Iowa, but I am here tonight to stand before you in support of all of our first responders, law enforcement, and uh, resource officers that are in our school, our school districts, and of the importance of it. I believe that I don't have to continue to tell you how important it is to have law and order um, in our city, in our state, um, in our country. And it's been happening since uh, the beginning of time. I mean, it's uh, recorded with Moses in the Bible and how Moses... Sorry. Um, anyway, and how Moses had actually come forward and, and, you know, the people came forward and they requested this, um, you know, law and order. And, of course, we've had it since then, and it's worked. And we look at states that it hasn't worked. And we look at um, how um, crime has increased in cities where they have defended police. And so I'm here just before you to tell you that we do need that continued support. I'm standing in support of all law enforcement, all first responders, and the importance of continued training and that we need to continue to fund that um, and that no matter what that is. and. Um, and continue to show the support for them. They have stressful jobs, as we all do. We all have to have certain funding. I know that there's been um, issues where um, individuals maybe not have agreed with their tax dollars going there, but I'm telling you, I like the fact that my tax dollars are going to, um, in support of people that are there when my family may need that and has needed that in the past. So I'm, I, again, here for that, and I thank you for your time. And respect. Right. Thank you. Carla Davidson. Is it Carla or Charla? So it's, are you Charla Davidson? Okay. Um, Shirley Evans. Shirley here? Shirley Evans. R.J. Miller. R.J. R.J. Miller. Activist, future candidate, Des Moines. I'm here to speak on behalf of my city. I'm looking over to my left and I see all these people coming in here from Altoona, from Johnston, Urbandale. None of you people can speak on our experience. There's a big cultural disconnect when it comes to our communities. You cannot sit there and say you support all law enforcement. I respect law enforcement if they're, if they're providing public safety, but you cannot ignore that there is, mis, there, there is misappropriations within law enforcement. So I'm asking city council, can we have a citizens review board? Mayor County, is, is this something that you would be on board with? We have a number of recommendations, and but we're not here to discuss. I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, well, my thoughts are this. Again, I'm not. This isn't an anti-law enforcement type of thing because I do feel like we need public safety. However, I do understand that there is corruption within all institutions. So, in order to ensure that we do not have corruption, we do need to have a citizens review board, and it doesn't need to be ran by people that are law enforcement. It should be ran by the citizens. So if there is misappropriations, we can hold them accountable. It has to be transparent, and it has to be accountability. So I believe, so who, who do I talk to in order to get this type of stuff going on? We'll forward your okay. uh, uh, and to my, and to my your left, city manager. And to my left, I'm seeing some people up here from, from back to blue. Do you, it's a, I understand you back to blue, but do you back the community? Do you back the community? Because I back the community. I'm with the people. If the police is representing the people and protecting and doing their job, then I'm with them. But if they're not, then I'm not. Plain and simple. I'm sick of all you people coming out here disrespecting my city, disrespecting my community. I'm looking over here at a man that literally got on Facebook and said that the city of Des Moines is infested with gangs and drugs. This is how these people view us. They view us like we're scum. So to my people who are in this movement and who are out here representing, I'm, I'm politely asking y'all, when y'all come to city council meetings, do it professionally. 
because they're going to turn around and disrespect you and talk about you. And I don't want none of my young brothers and sisters going to jail. City Council, you have done a horrible job when it comes to listening to these young people. So I politely ask you to listen to them because their voices are not being heard. They're upset. And RJ, can we get your address, please? Can we get your address, please? Hmm. Robert Gamble. My name is that real. Good evening. My name is Robert Gamble, 3910 34th Street, City of Des Moines, Ward 1. Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Gamble. I am the founder of America Backs the Blue, Iowa chapter. We are a group of 11,500 plus members strong of which many thousands live within the city of Des Moines. I rise, and the group that I organize, rise in strong support of our law enforcement officers. And to redirect you, the members of city council, of your duty and obligation to provide a safe and secure city for our residents. Okay? Safety and security, which everybody in the, in the city can read in the newspapers, they can uh, listen to the scanner, and they can also um, listen to the radio scanner, read the newspaper, and deduce that the city of Des Moines is uh, not getting safer. Okay? In fact, many in the community feel that some of our communities are less safe. Okay, I can point out the fact that a recent Des Moines Register article uh, wrote about the 50 some odd gangs that are active in the uh, city of Des Moines are now recruiting children as young as elementary school age into their ranks. Okay, child sex trafficking, trafficking in general, stabbing shootings. Hmm. May I wish to continue my my remarks, if not? Uh, no, everybody gets two minutes, so thank you. Uh, let's move on. Uh, Ronald Merrifield. Is Ronald Merrifield in? All right, Jolene Prescott. Gee, what can I say that I didn't say during our unfortunate interlude here when the council had to take a break? I remember uh, last month I was here. Jolene, can you give us your name and address? Oh, please? my name is Jolene Prescott, and I live at 3013 Third Street here in Des Moines. And I was signed up to speak to this council last month. And then there was a lot of disrespect that occurred, and I was not able to speak then. And I'm beginning to wonder, okay, do we, do we not, are there people that are being left out because certain groups are putting all their people on the list? I'm beginning to wonder. I think there are people that are getting on the list because we've got a couple of no's here. We've got people who aren't showing up. Who are these people? I see it this way. If you're going to sign up, show up or shut up. Okay? And for another thing, when somebody else is speaking, we don't need any laughter or anything like that. That is disrespectful. 
You don't see anybody else laughing. Did you want me to start disrespecting you guys? Because I can when you're speaking. So I've had enough. I've had enough of some of these people in here. And I think it's time just to lay down the law. Thank you, Jolene. Edward Young. Edward Young. <clears throat> Carrie Walters. Carrie Walters. Lori Palm. Lori Palm. Reverend Emily Ewing. I was going to speak about your lack of integrity, but then somebody used the Bible and ignored what's actually written in it. So, a Bible lesson. You don't have to believe in anything written in the Bible, but let's be clear. The only reason Moses is alive is because Shifra and Pua, the midwives, broke the law that Pharaoh had imposed and refused the babies of the, the Hebrew people in Egypt. Moses challenged Pharaoh's law that enslaved the Hebrew people. He didn't challenge it politely. He tried, right? He said, let my people go. And then what happened? Pharaoh, like many of you, ignored him, said no, or said yes and then no. And you know what happened? Ten plagues. If that's not disobedience, if that's not disruptive, I don't know what is. So for those who are using the Bible in an attempt to justify law and order, get your Bible right. Oh, Jesus was executed by the state. The Roman authorities profiled him, arrested him, kept him from having due process. Sound familiar? It should, because that is what has been happening for the last year plus in the city of Des Moines by the Des Moines Police Department. It is unsurprising to me that you continue to hold a position as the speaker for the Des Moines Police Department who is abusive, who has records of his family members saying how abusive he is, and yet Paul Parizek is still on the rolls of the Des Moines Police Department. That is a shame on all of you. Brandy Weber. Hello, I'm Brandi Weber. I live in Ward 3, and I'm actually running against Josh in the upcoming election. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to scoot aside so all of you can see this woman and her lovely faces. They're super respectful. Um, so I would like to call on the council to cancel all contracts with Mr. Connolly and his security team. I would like you, as a council, to rescind your resolution backing DMPD and city leaders who knew about the racist comments. I'm looking at you, Scott Sanders. I'm looking at you, Dana Winger. This is unacceptable. They knew about these comments and did nothing, and you continuing to back them? Is you backing racism? And, uh, and I would also like to say to the back the blue gentleman, safety and security can happen without racism and brutalizing. Thank you. All right, could we have a motion to receive and file the um, comments? I'll move to receive and file item 73. Item 73, A through T. A through T. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? All comments are received. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have one. Um, uh, Council request, 
uh, from the personnel committee. And um, Connie, do you want to um, quickly make the report? Yes. Uh, the personnel committee is charged with coordinating the performance review process and making recommendations for compensation for the three direct reports to the council based on the reviews from all council members. Our direct reports are city manager Scott Sanders, city attorney Jeff Luster, and the city clerk Kay Smellick. Uh, the council recognized the tremendous impact that the events of 2020 had on this city. COVID-19, the derecho, and the other issues that have faced us had, ha have definitely had an impact on the overall operation of the city. The council believes that the three direct reports have done a good job making sure that our city was delivering on its services and commitments to this community. There definitely was no playbook on how to handle all the things that was faced this past year. And we are grateful for the hard work, extra hours, and adaptability that has been shown by the three. Uh, also on the committee is Carl Voss and Mayor County, so I'd like to thank them for the work on this. And at this time, I will move item number 72. I voted yes. Seven yes. Motion carries. All right. The time is uh, 6.34. And um, this meeting comes to a conclusion. And um, thank uh, everybody for attending. And uh, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you all.